Welcome to another episode of Darwinian Delusions. Today what I want to cover is why similarities do not matter. And what I mean by this is this argument. We have a common ancestor with the chimpanzee because this similarity. Or because of this and this similarity, these two things must have a common ancestor. I want to challenge this in a very, very simple way, which is this. Similarities between human beings and chimpanzees and similarities between other creatures were known before Darwin. They were known and understood and catalog catalogued and described in detail before Darwin. Darwin came along and showed a mechanism of how any creature can slide into any other creature. So we get the traditional view of the tree of life, but remember there could be a complete inversion. You could have a human being over millions of years evolving into a carrot. That's also possible. You can have a carrot over millions of years evolving into a human being. Technically, that is possible. And if you think that's not possible, pick up a book by the philosopher of science, Michael Roos, uh, Philosophy of Human Evolution, published by Cambridge University, in which he speaks about this plasticity problem that the, the classification itself is almost arbitrary because, from a purely Darwinian point of view, anything can slide into anything. That's the whole point. So, similarities on their own mean nothing until you have a mechanism, and all the mechanism does is it makes it more probable if that mechanism is valid and it's shown to work. Now, if somebody points out, but look, there's a similarity between the elbow of a human being and the similarity between uh, that and the chimpanzee, well, the first thing that we need to do is this. We need to ask, are you saying that you believe that humans and chimpanzees have a common ancestor because you are assuming common ancestry? You are assuming homology. If the answer is yes, then you should leave that person alone. You should say, that's fine. You are assuming a common ancestor between human beings and chimpanzees because there's a similarity between the two. I don't have a problem with that and scientifically there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you say, no, I am not assuming, I am saying this is a conclusion, and I'm saying this is true. In that case, you would have to be corrected, because essentially what you're saying is this. Here's your argument. Similarities are due to common descent. Similarities exist, therefore similarities are due to common descent, which is circular reasoning. You are taking a conclusion which you've already put forth in your assumptions. So it's actually circular reasoning. So if someone says, I believe in human chimpanzee history, and I believe that's an assumption, no problem. But if you say it's a fact, it's true, it's as true as this table say, then you'd have to be corrected because you're basing that upon a circular reasoning. Also, even if you weren't using that circular reasoning, you were saying, I believe it's probable that human chimpanzee history is true. I wouldn't really have a problem with that, nor should anyone else. But if you claim fact, then you'd have to be corrected because even from a Darwinian point of view, firstly, it's the idea of human chimpanzee history is based upon methodological naturalism. It's also based upon the assumption of natural selection being the mechanism that leads A to B. And without that mechanism, similarity means nothing much. Uh, thirdly, it's also based upon the assumption of a single origin, that there is a single origin between all species and the, so that's where the tree of life begins and that that similarity is due to common descent. So you have multiple assumptions there. You have methodological naturalism, natural selection, homology and single origin. So it's not just a matter of, oh look, similarity, similarity, therefore common descent. On top of that, obviously you have the problem of homoplasy in which we have similarities which should not exist from a purely Darwinian point of view because these similarities are not due to common descent. So the similarities between a human being and a pig in terms of DNA and also in terms of a heart valve and other things, similarities between the marsupial and the saber tooth, the marsupial saber tooth cat and the placental saber tooth cat and a whole host of what's known as convergent evolution or homoplasies, these do not make any sense. So this very simplistic understanding, similarities are due to common descent, is not the correct academic understanding. Similarities on their own were known before Darwin and similarities don't count for anything until you have a valid mechanism and at best they then become probabilistic if those four assumptions are 
uh, assumed and you make an inference from that. Everything good I've said is from God. Every mistake is my own. For more videos on Darwinian uh, delusion, uh, for more videos about Darwinism, make sure you subscribe to Darwinian Delusions.